According to new CNN analysis of CDC data, only 28 percent of the U.S. population has been boosted, while 64 percent has received at least the two-dose series. Here to help discuss that is Dr. Ellen Eden, Associate Professor, University of Alabama at Birmingham Division of Infectious Diseases. Doctor, thanks so much for being here. In your opinion, do you think at this point whoever wants to get vaccinated or boosted has done so? I do. What we're seeing with boosters is very reminiscent with what happened early on with the initial vaccine dose, which was that many who were eager and enthusiastic got vaccinated very early. And we quickly reached saturation with that group, just like the boosted group. Those who were willing and enthusiastic about a booster quickly got boosted. And now we're seeing availability of boosters, but very little interest in the general population. And as you know, those boosters are essential to keeping individuals healthy and out of of hospitals, um, specifically with Omicron and potentially with newer, as yet to be identified variants. A doctor, there is a lot of pushback over mass mandates at the moment, and frustration is turning to anger. We are seeing school board members getting death threats over COVID mandates and mass mandates. We're seeing border disputes between Canada and the U.S. amongst truckers continue. It used to be a political divide. That was the reason some people gave. But now blue states are pushing for easing or lifting mass mandates. In your opinion, is it productive to continue with enforced mass mandates, especially the piecemeal way that they are being administered? Um, it is a very challenging question. I think masking mandates in some areas have been counterproductive, as you mentioned, due to really the disregard and vitriol towards our public health officers. I think that the best way to address masking now is at the local level. We know that what's going on in Alabama is very different from the Northeast and California. And so what I've encouraged is really businesses, agencies, schools, talk locally. What is your micro epidemic looking like? What is going on in your hospitals? How many doctors do you have available to staff your ICU? How are schools looking? And I've really encouraged collaboration between business owners, agencies, organizations with their local health experts to understand if and when it's safe to relax these measures. And just like we're discussing off ramps, I have really stressed that we start talking about on ramps for risk mitigation. Although we're all focused on this reprieve with Omicron, what we've learned with Alpha and Delta and prior surges is that we have had subsequent surges. So I really think it's inappropriate now to talk about these off ramps and relaxed measures without planning for a future surge, surge, hoping that it won't happen. And certainly this could be our last major surge, but to be caught unprepared now, almost three years into this pandemic in March, I think is really unacceptable. And Dr. Eden, Sweden, Sweden is the latest country to propose a fourth vaccine. I'd like to know where you stand on that. And people are being reinfected, right? So Prince Charles is the latest high profile case. Are the reinfections as severe? Currently, no. I'll tell you for the vast majority of individuals, um, reinfections and certainly reinfections in those who are fully vaccinated, for the vast majority of individuals, we are not seeing those as severe. Um, it is still recommended that people who were previously infected with alpha or delta do get vaccinated if they're not vaccinated already. I've seen examples of that in my clinic. People who thought they were in the clear, they thought they were immune because they'd already been infected, now got infected again in December, January, missed more work, kids got sick, household contacts, certainly exposing more in their community. So I still recommend vaccination if you are not fully vaccinated, even if you have some natural immunity. And I think with regards to that fourth dose, we're learning more. I think the evidence overwhelmingly shows that those of us with a normal immune system who've been fully vaccinated and boosted have a great amount of protection against severe disease, disease that's going to lead us to the ER, the hospital for breathing treatment, or even worse, life support like we've seen previously. So have confidence in those three doses. If you are immune suppressed, you do need to talk to your doctor because there are populations who are going to need a fourth dose sooner than later. Um, but I think the jury's still out on if and when the general population needs a fourth dose. Um, and it's certainly something to talk to your provider about if you have questions. Doctor, really quickly, only about 30 seconds left. I want to turn your attention to what's going on in Hong Kong. COVID cases are surging there. The system is overwhelmed. The vaccination rate is so low there. Should we be concerned that that is a breeding ground for a new variant? 
Absolutely. This is what keeps us up at night. Um, healthcare providers like myself, frontline workers, um, you know, March, even winter is not, not that far in our rear view mirror. We have a workforce who is weary. We in Alabama also have the lowest vaccination rates in the U.S. Um, I think this keeps us up at night with each wave. We're more weary. Um, we're less well staffed and prepared and resilient to respond to the next surge. So, of course, any community where there is transmission, there is opportunity for mutation and new variants. I can't say that'll happen. None of us have a crystal ball, but I do think it's important for us to be mindful, be prepared prepared, whether it's COVID or a flu or whatever the next infectious disease threat, we need to really ramp up our public health, public health infrastructure and be prepared. Okay, great advice there. Thank you so much, Dr. Ellen Eaton, Associate Professor, University of Alabama at Birmingham Division of Infectious Diseases. Thank you for your time.